After earning a split against the Macon Mayhem this past weekend, the Thunderbolt schedule really ramps up with three road games in four nights, heading to Knoxville on Wednesday and then Quad City on Friday and Saturday. I'm Tony Pecoraro and this is your look at the week ahead. The Thunderbolts trailed 2 to nothing in the first period on Friday night in Macon, but would gain life in the second period on a goal by Austin Plubby in the early minutes. However, the Mayhem would come right back to score another two goals to take a 4-1 to lead. Jacob Smith would score early in the third period to make it 4-2, to but that would be as close as the Thunderbolts would get in a 4-2 loss. On Saturday, the Thunderbolts got on the board first with a two-on-one goal by Seth Swenson from Matthew Barnaby. Tied at one aside, Connor Samvito would put Evansville in front in the second period with a power play goal, making it 2-1. Stanislav Zykov extended the lead to 3-1 in the third period on a wraparound, while Austin Plevy would make it 4-1 on a breakaway. The Mayhem would get back within two with a late power play goal, but the Thunderbolts would hold on to win by a 4-2 score, getting back into eighth place in the SPHL standings. The Thunderbolts had two transactions this past week. On Thursday, placing goaltender Max Strang on waivers. And on Monday, activating forward Scott Donahue from the injured reserve. The Knoxville Ice Bears enter the week with an 8-2-1 record. Good for 17 points in third place in the SPHL standings. They are led in goals by Bryce Nielsen and Anthony McVeigh, who have five each. And their leading point score is Stefan Bricado, who has 13. They are led in goal by Joseph Murdaka, who is 3-0 with a .965 save percentage. The Thunderbolts won their only meeting so far against Knoxville. Joseph Murdaka, already coming off one shutout the weekend prior, would follow up with a big first period performance on Friday, keeping the game scoreless while the Ice Bears were outshot 12-3. In the second period, Jason Price would score the game's first goal on a snipe from the high slot only 17 seconds into the period. A fight would break out early in the third period as Pensacola's Jesse Kessler enacted some revenge on Knoxville's Pierre Olette, who took out an ice flyers forward with a hit to the head moments earlier. The Ice Bears would take a 2-0 lead seconds later on a shorthanded goal by Bryce Nielsen before sealing the game with an empty net goal in the final minute by Brady Florence, 3-0 the score. On Saturday, Murdaka's shutout streak would be ended only 10 seconds into the game by Pensacola's Patrick McGannity. Knoxville would come back to score three unanswered goals in the rest of the first period by Lucas Bombardier, Brian Backnack, and Stefan Bricado. Tommaso Bucci would pull Pensacola back within one with a goal 16 seconds into the second period before Anthony McVeigh would reaffirm the Ice Bears' two-goal lead with a power play goal with seven seconds left in the period. Pensacola would come back in the third period with goals by McGannity and Joseph Drapluck tying the game 4-4 four four and forcing overtime. But the Ice Bears would get the victory and the weekend sweep as McVeigh would score the overtime winning goal 21 seconds in. The Quad City Storm enter the week with a 4-5-3 record, good for 11 points in 7th place in the SPHL standings. They are led in goals and points by Shane Bennett, who has 7 goals and 14 points this season. They are led in net by Peter DeSalvo, who has a 3-3-2 record and a .918 save percentage. The Thunderbolts are 0-1-1 so far this season against Quad City. The Storm would strike first on Friday against Peoria on a power play goal by Matias Salmon before Zach Nieman would tie the game for Peoria later in the period. Before the end of the first period, Dakota Klutcha would give the Storm a 2-1 lead, but Nieman would once again tie the game 2-2 on a goal early in the second period. The Rivermen would take a 3-2 lead in the third period on a goal by Jordan Ernst, but Quad City would force overtime as Klutcha would score again with just over four minutes left. However, Peoria would skate away with two points as Darren McCormick scored in overtime, winning it by a 4-3 score. Once again battling Peoria on Saturday, Quad City scored the only goal of the first period, clutch a start of the weekend. Alec Hackman tied the game back up early in the second period for Peoria, before the Storm would gain a 3-1 lead on goals by Vincent Beaudry and Shane Bennett. Peoria would get back within one goal before the end of the second period, however, on Ernst's second goal of the weekend. The Storm would see the 3-2 lead in the third period evaporate as Hackman would tie the game midway through before Jordan Carvalho made a 4-3 Peoria, followed by goals by Ernst and McCormick to lead Peoria over Quad City 6-3 in comeback fashion. The Thunderbolts are in Knoxville Wednesday night at 6.35 p.m. Central Time. Following a break between games on Thanksgiving, the Thunderbolts head to Quad City for two games on Friday and Saturday night, both games starting at 7.10 p.m. Central Time. You can watch all three games on SPHL Live or listen in for free on the Thunderbolts radio network through EvansvilleThunderbolts.com, the Thunderbolts on MixLR, or on the official Thunderbolts smartphone app. Unfortunately, due to busy holiday scheduling, there will not be an away game watch party this week. I'm Tommy Pecoraro, and that was your look at the week ahead. See you this weekend.